Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Darkest Hour for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Not Demonetized Yet Lover. But we gotta talk about the Hossback Memorandum. According to the memorandum written by Colonel Friedrich Hossback, a highly secret meeting was conducted between the Big Daddy and mainly high ranking German military officials. Reportedly, the meeting was geared towards addressing Admiral Rado's complaints about the lack of steel that was being allocated to the, to the Kriegsmarine rearmament program. Naturally, neither the Luftwaffe or the uh, officials that were present wished to see a reduction in their steel allocation so the dispute had to be handled. Apparently, the Big Daddy also used the meeting as an opportunity to discuss the outlines of the German foreign policy in the coming years and how it would affect the current poor state of the economy. Our Big Daddy Adolf proposed that an aggressive foreign agenda would have to be established, as with all the economic rewards that Germany would acquire from the small conflicts that he wished to instigate, the German economy would even be harder to rebuild. This also result in the Wehrmacht <clears throat> rearmament program stalling, which would allow the two hate-inspired antagonists, Britain and France, to catch up in terms of production, a potentially fatal mistake if it were to be allowed, be allowed to happen. As fire and aggressive rhetoric is surely a sign of things to come, the Big Daddy shall lead the right to greatness, as reorganizing the Abwehr, because, uh, well, we probably need to. So that time we make full use of our secret agents, or secret service, out there. There's no shame in using covert actions just when, after all the defeat of the enemy we are facing, and our victory is not just in the best interests, our best interests, but also in those of the entire human race. By spying on our enemies, sabotaging their armies and fortifications, and uncovering their own covert actions, we'll get another edge in the war, and once again show them that we're always one step ahead of them. Reorganize the Oba Commando. The time has come for Germany to be ascendant. However, we want to be able to stand up for the Anglo-French might. We must have competent, smart, structured military. As such, we'll be reorganizing our armed forces under a new banner, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. This organization shall be tasked with drawing up battle plans against our neighbors and reshaping our army to what is needed for Germany's might. And with our intelligent, quick-thinking command, we shall be the overlords of Europe. But, as we ended in the last episode, we are still here in España, doing just Spanish things. Um, hopefully they're taking the capital eventually, but time will tell. Especially if they want to attack us. Uh, taking the capital might be easier. Might be actually really easy. Or we just cut. Or just cut off the entire capital. That's also a very good possibility too. Um. Also, there is a slight bug right now. Uh, we're not getting cap supply. I think, or maybe it was fixed. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um. Earlier, there was no supply coming in here, and Monster has no portrait now. Well, that doesn't seem very good, does it? Von Bach has no portrait. Oh boy. Well, some of these guys are no longer portraits. That's not a good indicator of things to come. Guadalajara. But we have quite a few comms to go through, like I said earlier. And we're just going to hold Madrid for now. Because the Soviets, well, they're attacking us quite a bit here. So, uh, Meanwhile, our economy is doing okay. Not great, but okay. Um, these guys don't really like us. War propaganda. We don't need that one. Um, reorganize these guys. It's not bad overall. So gonna focus on this stuff too. Probably gonna not gonna do that. And unemployment's at six and a half percent, <clears throat> which is honestly pretty decent. Uh, so we're kind of stuck here, but that's okay. We have to reorganize up there, anyways. Arado. Oh yeah, we're gonna get some uh, planes, carrier-based planes, fighter bombers, attack aircraft for cast. Torpedo bombers would be pretty nice too. Um, that being said. Because uh, we do have one thing of carriers, so we probably still want to start making some of those. Heavy airframes, heavy bombers, naval bombers. Um, Carrier-borne fighters. Attack aircraft. Naval targeting is two. Five. Do we have... Oh, carrier-based fighters. 33, 36 is pretty decent. Carrier-based... Anything else? Fighters. 36 and 33... Oh, wait, wait. Carrier base 30. Yeah, that's still good. <clears throat> so that's good. Do we not have any naval bombers? Because we have you guys right here. Just fighters. For now. Well, if we have to, I guess we could get some. I'm not entirely sure, because this is the 1940s. I guess we could go with some of these. Torpedo bombers, though. Okay, so these are the guys, yeah. We're not going to get Cass... Carrier fighter. Uh, Cass... Uh, carrier... Carrier Cass bombers and stuff like that. My bad. Um, I don't know, do you guys ever use, you know, Carrier Cass? I always use naval bombers and fighters. I always found that would be the most effective, but... I could be very wrong. Let me know in the comments below, because I really want to know your opinion on that. Um, do you ever use that? Okay, so now we're actually getting supply back in here. Okay, that's good. Just... My main goal is to just crush as many enemies as possible. 
Good, good, good. They, they want to attack us as well. I mean, I'm okay with that. You know, as long as we win. That's what matters to me the most. Oh, Italy's here too. Oh, we do that. We get into the entire division. Oh, but now that loser's kind of exposed, isn't it? Oof. They're doing okay. It looks like they're not doing that well. I'm not sure how the Spanish Civil War is supposed to go. I mean, obviously the you know the fascists are supposed to win and whatnot, but I'm a little concerned about the status of the war right now, just a little bit. Oh, that's that's pretty nice actually. Can we do anything here? Maybe like just use the tanks and encircle enemy divisions. Maybe. I mean, that would be very beneficial. Ooh, wow, we're look at all we're building right now. And we can make a little bit more money that way, but <clears throat> we'll see what happens. We do have a cup of peppermint tea here to keep us nice and warm as well. It's 1937. Let's start working on two things of military factors at all times. I think that would be very beneficial for us. And another division goes bye-bye. Now we can move fast enough. That would be really, really flipping great. Can we do anything else here? MFO building. Ah, yes. Munich. Well, Rexkaban, Nuremberg, yes. Uh, but we'll get through to some of the comments very soon as well. I'm just more worried about the Spanish Civil War currently. Good. So hold the line as best you can. Gross Tractor, which is just another medium tank. So, 169 days. Holy crap. Uh, yes, please. So, yeah, medium bombers are okay, naval bombers are okay, not great. I really want to make sure we have enough planes here, though. Um, that's not enough, that's not enough. Yeah, once we hit next year as well, we're going to start, like, at three, at least three military factors being worked on at all times, if not more. Because I'm, I'm really worried about the economy, because, like, a lot of the times, I'm not saying that the deaths are bad at all, at all, I'm not saying that at all. But, it's very often, as one of the comments did say, that the economy can really screw you over later parts of the war and whatnot. Oh, God, you know, just retreat is fine. I want to do a bit too much right now. Especially without supply. Um, they have most of the divisions up there. It, okay, what happened to our other guy? What if I'm Blombug? What happened to you? I'm using Defender. You know what? I want someone defensive right now. Alright, so where's supply? Supply is all around here. So we need to be down here. Screw the north. You guys go right there. Arrange it up there. Blomberg's marriage. Oh, oh no! Recently, War Minister Werner von Blomberg wed his second wife, Erna Grun, having been a widower since the death of his first wife. However, this development has led to controversy within the Reich, as Grun has been revealed by the Berlin police to have a long criminal record and has posed for pornographic photographs. Oh my! Marriage to a person within such a criminal record is in violation of the standard of conduct for officers defined by Blomberg himself. This new revelation of Grun's past has come back to shock as both to Hermann Goring, who had been Blomberg's best man, the big daddy fear himself. Who? Has served as a witness at the wedding and is now pressuring von Blumberg to annul his marriage. Cancel the wedding at once. How could you? Now, could you imagine that today? Like, <clears throat> with everything that's going on, like OnlyFans and stuff like that. Oh, you can't do this. You have to be. You have to resign from your position. Cordoba, please. Right now, it's just a rush for, like, encirclements of VPs, and I'm just only here for supply. Literally just for supply. I'll let you guys do that, but uh, next supply point is Granada. Even though I do want to get down here all the way to Seville. Um, we could probably follow this way down to Seville if we need to. Yes, oh yes. Up and out. So we got two going. I do also want to make a synthetic refinery. Fuel gain from refinery's bonus. Current fuel gain is negative 5%, which sucks. But that's okay. Because we have to build, build, build. Anywhere replace 500%. Uh, the Navy is uh, obviously not high priority right now. Um, oh, cavalry, tank organization, max speed for tanks. Oh, but more recovery and organization breakthrough. Ooh, go, go to the speed for now. Um, in the meantime, we're going to do Poland immediately because Poles got to go. Not that I don't like Poles. I love girls on Poles, but, well, maybe not that. The Blomberg of Frisch Affair. After refusing the Fuhrer's orders to have his marriage annulled, von Blomberg is now resigning from his post after threats from Goren to make his wife's criminal past public knowledge. This development <clears throat> uh, 
has led to a power gap in the Wehrmacht military command, according to the China command. Von Blomberg's rightful successor should be Commander-in-Chief Werner von Frisch. However, Goring voices objection to having Frisch become his superior, and Himmler has presented evidence accusing Frisch of being a homosexual. Perhaps this evidence could be used to pressure Frisch and those close to him into resigning and presenting an opportunity to restrict the Wehrmacht's China command, reform the high command. Being a homosexual? Hmm. This is what you get. Total war! Hmm. Uh, if we can eliminate two divisions, that'd be beautiful. Even though our organization, especially for tanks, is kind of low, but it should be okay. Can we throw any... Oh, is there only one man? Bruh. Is there only... Ah, we got him. Very good. Ah! Let the tanks deal with it for now. Help destroy the other division, because you can. And Granada would be nice, too. There you go. And at this point, just kind of go. Just go, literally go up the coast. Oh my god, it's so fast. <sighs> Spanish public has capitulated. Spanish government has gone to exile and many parts of the of the Spanish stage now control the home area. Although the struggles between the Spanish state and the Spanish Republic are over, the state of Spain is still at a lot war and the fighting continues elsewhere. You sure about that? Are you sure about that? This Francisco Franco Bajomondo, which I always say wrong, is uh, doing alright. La Guerra Civil. Promote urbanization. Ah, oh, Franco, what a guy. What happened to this one? Heinz and the Reich. Oh. After December 1st. We need more manpower, huh? The lesser German solution was a mistake. Austria will join the Reich. Okay, so we need more divisions then. In the field. Definitely. Um, I definitely want to reform this. I don't mind motorized infantry. I don't know. Light tanks. Did I change any of these yet? They're all light tanks. Light tanks are not necessarily bad in themselves, but... I want medium tanks. We have 116. So if I change this to... Because these are heavy tanks. This one, do we have enough for it? Gives us a little bit more armor, a little bit less recon, a little bit more supply use, but that's okay. We do what we must here. For success. <clears throat> what else can we do? Uh, we can do stuff up there, but I want to wait for that. We can't do this one yet either, so we got to do all this one and wait first. Bavang. Uh, <clears throat> Bavangungskrieg. It's not bad. Motorization campaign is not bad either. Increasing the attack power. Falschim, the troopman. Obviously, we gotta go that way. Donuts, uh, service raiders. I like that idea more. I honestly personally prefer that one, but donuts, you both would be better. Uh, Strengthen Enigma. That's 15 days, it's not bad. Our enemies are on our heels, and every day they're coming one step closer to cracking our code, which could lead to disastrous outcomes. Luckily, we are aware of this, and our coders are more than capable of strengthening the code. This new and improved Enigma will prove far too complex for the last of minds of our foes. Beautiful. Uh, how much manpower do we have in the field currently? It's not bad. I'm gonna. Uh, I don't want to auto deploy you, but we're gonna need that soon. Yeah, we definitely needed to do that. I'll just give you one. Because we'll need divisions on this side too, so. So you guys are the tanks. You guys are okay. Led by nobodies. Okay. About the model. From the Wait, you're still here. The game might still be bugged. Actually, if I remember correctly, there might have been an update that might have fixed some of the bugs, maybe? So I might have to replay this again and put my game on off offline mode. Also, this, this is not perfect, obviously. So we'll see after this episode, because what is it, Von Witzleben and Von Weisko? Leute. Hmm. Let me bills are due. Um, there an interception, it'd be nice. Don't do that anyways, nice. And we'll get the Opa Commando to the Vemop. So, some comments included. Thanks for doing a series on this mob. I want to see how functional it is before jumping in myself. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so it says, don't spam divisions. Eco economic system is not fleshed out. So if you have a massive army, you can't keep fighting it anymore. And then you go into debt, trap, and then you can't do anything. So uh, <clears throat> some people say that Britain and France are really weak, or sometimes they're really overpowered. 
Um, some of the comments said, basically, they're a threat as they have much more divisions than they normally do, both Britain and France. <clears throat> Uh, should we smooth sail when we fight the allies? Maybe if we can have a com competent AI, AI Italy and supplies and whatnot. But uh, yeah, someone says uh, d maybe we're worried for the Soviets because they are, are strong, perhaps. A lot of divisions alone will make it very difficult for us. So basically, for us, we need to have good divisions. <clears> the <throat> Universal Infantry Division with like anti tank, recon, engineers, maybe uh, maintenance, but maybe not maintenance. We'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. I don't, know. I don't know about that. Have armor divisions that can mostly encounter enemy tanks, defeat enemy, don't, can't get pierced, and circle divisions. Someone uh, else, and he else says, ABD. Have air support, basically. A lot of fighters, enough fuel, lots of gas. So. Uh, but the Oba Commander would have been mocked. Following the Blomberg Fisher fam, there's been reported that the Fisch was encouraged by General Ludwig Beck to carry out a military putsch against the Fuhrer, but had declined and since then resigned from his position. The command, position of Commander in Chief, now filled by Vatov von Brauschet, <clears throat> who Fisch had recommended as his successor. With the position of the Minister of War still left vacant, by the decree of the Big Daddy, the de deputies or duties of the Ministry have since forth been transferred to the newly formed organization, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, the existing High Command of the Army, the Oberkommando der Heers, uh, made subordinate to it, and Wilhelm Keitel placed in charge of the OKW. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. Motorized soft attack, huh? Interesting. Replace Grosser General Staff, Gr Great General Staff with Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. We do what we must. Um, increasing attack power, motorization campaign. As time goes by, we're continuing to develop our military doctrine and place more importance upon the use of armored vehicles as well as speed and mobility. <clears throat> However, currently, there's one glaring issue in our plans. How are the infantry, the backbone of the Wehrmacht, going to keep up with our armored spearheads? The answer is quite simple motorized vehicles and lots of them. Not only will these vehicles allow our infantry the ability to keep up with their tanks, but they'll also be afforded some valuable protection on the battlefield. However, obtaining the levels of motorization that's needed will be no easy feat. So we must embark on, a, on our campaign of mass motorization right away. Good. <clears throat> We're gonna need a lot of fuel for all this. We might even need some more empty tank too. We have more than enough political power though. Because right now, man. Even if the, we're not building that many other things that cost us that much, military s spending is the most. Even with our consumer goods factories, we actually have an equal amount of spending for consumer goods and use military factories. That's gonna... It's a bit ridiculous, not gonna lie. Increase their attack power. <clears throat> as we establish here as the true masters of the land, we must make sure its capabilities are the highest standards, capable of striking the heart of the Reich's adversaries without the hesitation in no, or in no or inferiority. However, thanks to the anglo French Treaty of Versailles, the Reichsia has been in the state of pacifism. With militarization out of the question, still into the British and French door, we must end this anglo French influence on our military as such, increase their capabilities so they attack their forces, and that of our other adversaries, through a reorganization and reformation of the recruitment and training processes. Along with acquiring high quality mechanized vehicles, the Hale will be the true masters of the land, dominating Europe's landscape from the plains of France to the Ural Mountains. Well, that's a hope. So we got that one done. Torpedo bombers. We will need some better naval bombers, too. Honestly, like... We're gonna keep making more cities for now, because we're gonna run into a giant problem later on with money. We are we are literally gonna run into a giant money pit problem. And I'm not looking forward to it at, at all. So we're gonna navigate the globe, good for her, no one cares. Rear area of the repair shop. So, all the support companies are done for now. Support Marines would be nice to have, just in case we need to do a sea lion. Not gonna lie, 1939. Uh, artillery stuff. 1940, so we can wait. Armor doesn't get better until the next couple of years. What is that? heck is this? How are you taking sacrifice mobility? Oh. oh, God. Another tank. Okay. Capital ships, 33. 40. Friedrich de Grossa. Ooh. <clears throat> that's a good modern dreadnought for us. Battle cruisers, battleships, yeah, that's a good dreadnought. Graf Zeppelin. We already made one carrier class. I don't we don't need too many because we've mostly close to the coast, and hopefully we have enough, you know, planes for that, but we'll see, of course. Um with political power, there's not really much we can re really really want to do. Guarantee cost. Focus on peace. 
Just fight World Goals times. Decryption would be nice. Actually, I prefer Goat Balls right here, but we're going to keep it historical for now. It doesn't really matter too much. We're from the anti comet Impact. Um, I kind of want to do that one too. Actually, I really want to do that one. Himes in the like. Best of all, well, communism and everything it stands for is nothing more than evil, self destructive, and will end up all facets of life in our planet. Should it spread throughout the world? <clears throat> You're not wrong. The best example of this is the Soviet Union, whose power and influence is spreading throughout the world that it has in already initiated its efforts in spreading the global revolution to every corner of the globe, from the communists in China to the front door. <clears throat> It's paramount that we unite the world regardless of ideology to contain and combat this cancer of the world. We'll create the anti commenter back, a coalition of nations who will offer mutual assistance to member states in order to combat this prevailing threat in the world. It's time that the world sees the inevitable failures of communism once and for all, and that we must defeat it before it consumes us. <clears throat> back to the Soviets. Um, this probably be good to do too. Can't do the one. Yeah, we still need more manpower in the field, but that's why we, we pooped out some more divisions first. Um, Udet Affront Leinenflieger. The Wehrmacht is undoubtedly one of, if not the greatest armies in the history. Our armies are a tremble, even at the thought of facing us in the field, so it's only logical that we should put all our resources into strengthening it even more, into making it truly unstoppable. That is why the Luftwaffe shall focus its efforts on the development of ground support doctrines and assist the Wehrmacht in every step of the way it cuts through our enemy's forces. The fact that Hermann Göring, one of the most trusted friends of our Führer and as head of the Luftwaffe, has a big proponent of this plan makes the course of action even more obvious. The Empire of Japan has joined a pact. Due to the fear of communism coming to the doorstep, the Empire of Japan has ratified the terms stipulated in the anti communist Pact and has became an official signatory state. Re they recently said that, It is in the best interest of any nation and my countrymen to become a signatory to the pact that will counter the dangerous forces of communism and world revolution that is hell-bent on destroying the very fabrics of our society it's built upon. They've chosen widely down with the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks. Love them. Heavy bombers. I'm not sure we're really going to focus on heavy bombers. Fighters, though. The 40s heavy fighters are not necessarily bad to have, but I don't really want to use fighter bombers either. It is. Oh, crap. We have a lot of stuff here, too. Weekly manpower. Oh, I'm going to go with that one, definitely. My bad. I should have gotten that stuff earlier, but I'm not used to having an industry doing a lot of industry stuff like that, so. <clears throat> a lot of that. Planes are looking okay ish. Money wise, I'm just very worried about money. Use military factories. Unused civilian factories. I'd rather just build right now. Um, yeah, that's really bad. We will have to lower spending in some of these areas probably eventually. Or raise taxes. Which I don't want to do either, but... 35% more money is not bad to have. Social spending. Horse board goes down. Cost, you can eliminate that by half maybe. Military spending. Get more division, attack, and defense, which I don't want to hurt at all. Research, education, I don't want to hurt either. Oh my god. This is going to be a pain in the butt. Italy proposes negotiations to IG Farben. We presented an offer by the Italian government in relation to IG Farben, a German company that is a major producer of chemicals. <clears throat> And that will be very useful for our transition to autarky, as we have good relations with the Italians. Mainly due to our shared ideology and goals, they hope that we will be able to strike a deal that they can use to the fullest extent. However, we too want our fair share, and while we are more than willing to find a deal with them, it would be in our interest to try and increase the price that they must pay to get what they want, of course. <clears throat> we can agree to the terms that they first presented to us, but it could be a good idea if we want to generate some more funds. And we'll just start with that one. Uh, the next part tag begins, focus on unemployment. Woo! On work ethics, I'll put 10%, um, it's not very much. Uh, I'd rather build right now, we're still building. So, what do we have here? Anything? Agreement on synthetic oil patents with IG Farben side. <clears throat> it is a great day in Europe for fascist forces, as Italy and the Germans have finally agreed on partnership terms after lengthy negotiations. The collaboration involved a, a synthetic oil patents agreement that will benefit both countries, of course. Synthetic oil, which has been developing for a few years, must be the future of the fuel economy as those who own it no longer require the massive oil wells of the French and British value so highly in the Middle East. Following the agreement signing, both the Duce and Fumet Führer address their ministers and populations, claiming that this is only the beginning of a closer relationship between the heirs of the Roman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire. The British and French diplomats remain silent, claiming that the synthetic oil is a waste of time. However, this is a significant scientific advance for both the synthetic industry and a significant step towards autarky for both nations. The Germans and the Italians together on the road to glory. Nice. I was wondering how we're going to get more money. To pay for the Autobahn. Um, ah, Suits roll is German, and this is definitely not historical. I want to do this one, but the Stahl Pact? Ah, we'll do the Pact of the Soviets first. 
The Franco-British Entente has kept a duopoly on European global hegemony as now is an inevitable, inevitable end, however. While on the path of its demise, it still stands strong, able to counteract our advances and ambitions in Europe and abroad. While we take pride in German superiority, it would be foolish to believe that we can stand alone against the empires of the globe, along with a seemingly neutral ally in the Atlantic, and the profit state on our borders. However, Benito Mussolini, the Il Duce of Italy, has recently undergone its own revanchist movement against... Uh, our mutual adversaries. Perhaps we can forge a new alliance, one similar to the one we had before the Valkyrie. This time, however, we won't take the Italians for granted, and we'll closely monitor them should they go out of the line. Mit Brenda Sol. In complete secrecy, uh, Pope Pius XI uh, had managed to publish and distribute to the priests of the German Catholic churches over the last week of something of a scathing manifesto condemning the German people's faith in the myth of blood and soil. Read by almost every Catholic church at Mass. On Palm Sunday, one of the busiest days for the church, this tower quickly came to the ears of hundreds of thousands of Germans who condemned the Reich. Government never mentioning the Nazi party by name, but mentions a mad prophet likely alluding to the Fuhrer, of spreading pantheistic confusion across the German people, and although it does admit that race is a fundamental value of human communities. A necessary and honorable effort should also state that the exaltation of blood and race, or the state, should not go beyond the standard levels lest they become idolatry. Oh, what can be done about it? The press shouldn't talk about this. Because we have the political power for it, because it's going up. I want to keep making more military factories because we need to have military factories. But the cost is too high. In all honesty, it's just a wee bit too high. And we need dockyards too. And refineries, uh, the Soviets want to start docks. We've received good news today from the Soviets that they are willing to begin negotiations over a non-aggression pact. This is a tremendous victory for our administration, and as this will allow for our troops to be moved away from the Soviet border without fear about two-front conflict should war break out with Britain or France. It also means we might be able to negotiate certain territorial arrangements. We both have claims of various parts of Poland, and the Soviets continue to eye up land in the Baltic states as well. While we are cautious about letting them have the free reign over the region, it is still an issue that requires much discussion between our two nations. The fact that the Soviets have agreed to talk is already a major, for, a major step forward in improving relations, as we, as well as being another hurdle removed from our path to uniting all Germanic peoples. There's no time to waste, and we shall get down to business quickly. Let the negotiations begin. Trade agreements with the USSR, but after the Stahl Pact. Well, our primary focus is in the East. It seems that our Western entanglements will prevent us from acting in that direction anytime soon. The Anglo naval superiority is only growing in proportion to our strength. It's likely that they'll again cut off essential grain imports and material shipments. While our future lies in the East, our present situation can be helped by the East. The USSR, to say in the simplest terms, is home to the colossal amounts of raw materials that can feed our war machine and grain that can feed our population. It's only in our best interest, at least in the context of the near future, to conclude a trade agreement with them as soon as possible. While the foreign ministry has already drafted an initial proposal, it'll be highly likely that they will request various technologies in order to facilitate the trade agreement and an acceptable price for the acquisition of these vital resources. Oh. Cool. Today, Germany's Foreign Minister Jakob Ribbentrop and the Soviet Union's Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov met in Moscow to sign a non aggression pact. Its terms required each party to make a formal promise of peace to the other and neither government to support or form an alliance with the other's enemies. In addition to the publicly established non aggression uh, uh, requirements, this news stunned the Western world, particularly Japan. And as predicted, this pact will be used to divide Eastern and Western Europe among the old continent major powers, even if it is simply declared to be a non aggression pact. The only thing the Western Allies can hope for is that the Soviet Union does not enter the war as an Axis ally. A great success. Berlin-Moscow alliance, huh? Mussolini wants to visit Germany. Who doesn't? We've received an interesting proposal from a resident Italian ambassador in Berlin today. He's related an offer on behalf of the Italian government informing of Benito Mussolini's willingness to come and visit Germany, with a justification being to show solidarity between the two fascist nations to the world. A meeting representing the 115 million Germans and Italians against the Western powers and Bolshevism, of course. Such a meeting would have to share its share of political aims for us, so it would represent our giving the Italians an opening towards further diplomacy between our two nations, maybe even giving way to more formalized ties between our two nations that might gain us both benefits, for example. Austria's independence has been guaranteed by Italy for quite some time. While our nation is in no position to fight a war, it might benefit far more to simply align ourselves with Italy and turn them into the fold, having them forego such a guarantee voluntarily. After all, Italy's ambitions are many and their allies are few. That's why they are so keen on having Mussolini visit. Opening relations with us would give them a greater diplomatic weight to throw around Europe and allow them to pursue their goals more easily. That said, uh, there are those in the government who find the idea of an elite alliance with Italy distasteful. The Italian military is an example of renown for its prowess, and has struggled in capturing the African territories of Libya and Abyssinia since the turn of the century, who have not done much to assuage fears on their incompetence. They argue that Italy could end up being more of a liability than an asset in the future, and that we should never in the bud any expectations on the Italians' part that we intend to ally ourselves with them. A future Italian ally could be useful. Yes. Wow, that's 70 days? Oh my gosh. I'm doing things out of order now. My bad. Uh, four. That's so bad. 
Fuel game per cell, I mean, that's nice and all. Uh, fuel game per refineries, that's stuff too. I mean, we need tanks. We, we have to have tanks. Oh, there we go. This is going to be way more difficult than I thought it initially would be. Unblock. We got, I guess we just keep building? I mean, I mean, how do we get more money? We need more money. Don't know. Don't know. Yes. Medium bombers. Uh, back to experimental research, maybe, but really. Yeah. Engineering? Oh, yes. My bad. I should have done this earlier. Research speed, yes. Mussolini states visited Germany. I'll we'll talk about that after we get this one done. The two great fascist powers of Europe have, uh, have joined the day in solidarity as Mussolini ventured north into Germany to meet with the German Chancellor Adolf Hitler. As Duce met with Hitler in Munich and the two leaders toured the various provinces of Germany during the same visit, Mussolini attended a parade in Berlin, Germany's capital, at which point both dictators declared their desire for peace on the Euro European continent. The visit comes at a time when relations between the two powers seem to be warming considerably with a toxic possible alliance in the future. The nation of the move is sure to make shake of the balance of power in Europe as the two nations together represent a significant combined economic and military bloc in Europe. International com commentators have called the possibility of an alliance between Italy and Germany threat to all democracies in the West or the words of an unnamed Western journalist. Neither France nor Britain has yet commented on these recent developments. Our influence grows, as it should. Um, formidable nations, propaganda, political actions. Does it matter right now? Uh, well, we gotta start thinking about taking out uh, these fine fellows down here, too. Because you guys, that's not gonna be enough for you guys to defend. Um, there we go. Six divisions. Uh, that's not enough either. There, be offensive, because you can. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe we should have gone defensive, but whatever. Keep training, you need it. Stall pack, trade agreements. I'm in the rank. The decadent treaty of Versailles displays large swaths of German citizens in foreign lands from Austria to Romania. Such displacement from Germany has opened them to harassment, intimidation, and often ethnic violence. As some of the regions of our citizens are located and have suffered greatly from the Valkyrie, and believe that Germans are the root of all their problems and vent their rage and anger toward us, we can allow our fellow Aryans to be discriminated against and harassed upon, and as such, we will create a uh, foreign policy based off expansionism to territories that were not only part of a glorious empire, but also territories with vast amounts of Aryans. That way, concept of growth Deutschland can still be achieved once and for all. Uh, Ludendorff dies at the age of 72. Many high-ranking members of the Wehrmacht, the SS, Hitler, as well as great crowds of all echelons of German society gathered today during the funeral of General Erich of Ludendorff, one of the great minds behind Germany's war effort during the Great War. So coming to liver cancer, he was buried in the new Alfriedhof in the south of Bavaria. His will will forever be remembered. His name will forever be remembered among one of the great minds of his time of his concept of total krieg, or total war shall never be forgotten by those who argue for its implementation. The death of old, the old sinner might mark what has been called a new era of military doctrines. Peace is but the interval between wars. As you ultimatum to Czechoslovakia, Hitler gives a speech to the Reichstag, improved relations costs, ooh, this guy, cool. Yeah, we'll get there anyways, we'll need that eventually. But, in the same meantime, we're going to get that too. Because what are we lacking? We're lacking light tanks and medium tanks. That's not good. Well, of course, we just made some, so... Um, we'll do that there. But, it just doesn't cost. Super heavy battleship. A dinner demands. Screw it, we're going to make one. We've been waiting for a while, and the time is of the essence. The Austrian people deserve to have a smooth and orderly integration of the Reich. That may well not be the will of the government, but we can change that easily. Oh, look at that. After shaking hands with Schuschnigg on the type of, of the steps of the Berghof, we walked to the study and got straight to the point. Austrian politics are at a crossroads. The nation is broken because of the great betrayal. Internal, external. While the Western powers have abandoned them, we, the true German nation, will, can fix all of Austria's problems. Lunch was not most was most pleasant, although the Austrian Chancellor and his delegations looked seemed uncomfortable. But one can one expect when they were opposite you and your finest generals. The moment came to unveil a list of demands, surprise creating our counterparts' faces. Along the demands of lifting the ban of the Austrian Nazis, we also declared that some must be given important positions in the government, such as Minister of the Interior, finally. At the end of the document uh, lies a clause which stated that, that by not signing it, Germany would forcefully unite Austria into the Reich. The Austrian government will no longer hold the people hostage any longer. And so we watched the Chancellor sign his name on the Betschgaden Agreement. We cannot uh, guarantee ratification, but that was a minor inconvenience. After all, they'd sign and a retreat from it will be in action if any regard. As Schuschnigg's car drove away, we poured ourselves another glass of wine and toasted to success. Our group to ends over Austria. 
because they want to be with us, whether they like it or not. Man, look at that. Our guy's name, man of the year. Germans of the world rejoice today when stacked in every newsstand and bookstore was the latest issue of the American magazine, Time, featuring none other than the Big Daddy Fuhrer himself. As the man of the year, the great accomplishments that have ranked the Chancellor, such as influential figure even across the Atlantic Ocean, include many feats of uh, diplomacy and displays of power that have definitely earned the admiration and perhaps fear of the international community and sparked the curiosity of the American people on the current state of uh, German politics. Tomorrow belongs to us, my friends. Where are you at? Oh, only 10? Oh, we can't get to 80. Holy crap. Can we go any We can't go any higher, huh? So, fighter, 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 fighter. I'll do one more. Train until you die. That's basically what I want you to do. Literally train until you all die. Oh, it's going to be so bad. Yeah, the cypher's for Poland, which would be very good. i do that anyways, too. Why not? Um, in terms of ciphers, though, I'll probably do France next. I can't wait to take over Austria. I can't wait. Happy 1938, everybody. Happy 1938. Oh, we need more map art, huh? Warmonger. Denziger War. Huh. Well, we can wait to do that one. We'll do, do a critic with them first. Basically, we should be nice. Or trains, get this one first. That one's more important. Oh, we need more military factories. I think military factories just cost a little bit too much, maybe. Because our factories are only like one. How, how many factories does France have? They have no war support and they're pretty stable. Um, intelligence, army, civilian, they have no manpower, that's not a great amount of the stuff they have there, that's roughly compared to ours, but ours is more, they don't have very much, they have roughly maybe ours, probably less, I don't know, maybe maybe this is an appropriate amount, maybe, I don't know, like I've been trying to build as much as we possibly can, like my god, the good lord knows we're trying to build as much as we possibly can, that's fine, we do whatever we need to get more stuff here, um, Insisted, nice. Small arms. We're not even making that many small arms either. Do we need to put down any resistance? Hope not. Um, it would help if we started doing this. Maybe, maybe not. Danzig. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we only have one fuel thing right now. Taylor gives her a speech to the Reichstag. He likes doing that pretty often. Uh, currently, daily gain is 684, which is not enough. We don't have enough fuel, period. Daily current, daily current consumption is 2100. Holy shnikes. That's a lot of consumption. Um, why not a zero, huh? Uh, a few right off here, though. Uh, I was recently given a three hour speech in front of the Reichstag in which he addressed the German foreign policy. He continued to dismiss the League of Nations as nothing more than an institution for defending the interests of Versailles. He reiterated the aspirations of his nation as former colonies lost after the Great War. Territorial expansion seems to be the utmost importance for the most powerful man in Germany, seeing that the German Reich is no longer willing to tolerate the suppression of 10 million Germans across its borders, the implication being plain to see. To mitigate the reaction of the European great powers, Hitler has reminded the French and British that, excluding the colonial possessions, the Third Reich has no territorial disputes with them. Poland, apparently placated by the promise of border integrity, has been a neutral, cautious observer of the unfolding events. Expressing gratitude to the Austrian Chancellor for trying to find a way which is in the interest of both countries, the fear's message is uh, clear. All Germans must be united with the fatherland, and foreign powers have no right to intervene. Our place in the sun. The Berlin Pact, huh? I'll wait to wait for... Oh, wait, what? They're not at war. Ooh. Uh... They should be at war already, though, shouldn't they? Oh, this might be a bug. That's not good. Should I have 226? Oh, February 2026. 20, um, I guess I'll have to wait and see that again, maybe? Um, because that's not good. As being our two friends in the Far East, China and Japan continue to fight each other, we're being forced into a difficult situation where we must abandon one of them and throw a scorpion on the other. Well, we need not make the choice just yet, as our ambassador to China, Oscar Trotman, has proposed the idea of him leading a mediation talks between the two countries to attempt to end the war before more blood is spilled, and unite all three of our nations against the threat of communism. However, should the talks fall, we must fully be prepared to make that choice, as an ally in the East is necessary to provide the counterbalance of the Soviets and limit their influence. Because god dang, we hate communists. He Oh, 500. How are you supposed to get that much attack aircraft? 
Like, I don't understand. Like, uh, innovative military officers in the Wehrmacht devise a new way of conducting warfare against land forces. Bewegungskrieg, Bewegungskrieg, or lightning war, advocates the usage of highly concentrated firepower comprised mostly of artillery pieces and their mobile ports of tanks. Infantry on wheels as well as mechanized vehicles to disrupt enemy formations and waste as little manpower and equipment as possible while doing so. We should move to quickly adopt this revolutionary doctrine since the painful memories of the sluggish trench warfare from the Velkrieg are still fresh in the minds of her people and the Albo Commando de Wehrmacht. Ah, the decadent treaty of Versailles displaced large swaths of German citizens in foreign lands, uh, from Austria to Romania, and such displacement from Germany. Has opened them to harassment, intimidation, and ethnic, ethnic violence, of course, and whatnot, so. Um, this way, the concept of gross Deutschland can be achieved once for all, demand the Sudetenland, huh? Claiming Mamel. Uh, Mamel, while one of the smallest territories ever lost by us, is still considered an embarrassment, considering how a small nation, Lithuania, is able to gain territory from one of the most powerful nations in the world. Subjects of embarrassment must be rectified as soon as possible, for it should serve as a precedent for the other nations and the weakness of a glorious nation due to this. We shall enforce our claims in the region of Mamel land, along with pressure of the uh, pressure of the Lithuanian government to surrender such territory. If they refuse, well, they shall see their nation off the, ma off the map a week, within a week or two. Demand the student land. Uh, we need more map. God, we have so much manpower. With Austria liberated and under our benevolent rule, we shall look towards another issue, the Czechoslovakia. The territory in their west consists of primarily German citizens who have been displaced and are permanently confined within the borders of the Czechs, facing harassment and intimidation every day from its citizens. This act of terror is tolerated by the Reich, and as such, we have destroyed or deployed agents within their borders to instigate and escalate conflict within the region. With this stability and unrest on the rise, we find ourselves at a perfect position to intervene, by sending an ultimatum demanding the return of a rightful sovereign territory. While Czechoslovakia may refuse, the West wouldn't, and it's probably the best that we negotiate with both of them and end up with a decisively favorable deal for us. Bro, how much map are my supposed to- Oh, we're close. Okay. Is that enough to do with that? No. God dang it. Wait, what? What else do we need here? Oh, we need to have Austrian in us. Lithuania yields to Mamel. With German forces on the border poised to attack, the Republic of Lithuania has given in to a German ultimatum, demanding the surrender of the old Prussian territory of Mamel. It was passed to the Republic of Lithuania by the Treaty of Versailles, but now has been reintegrated into the region of Ostpreußen. How will you reach the extent of German territorial ambitions in Europe? Experts are doubtful. What is this? Good. I guess we got that one done. So we gotta wait for Austria to... Um, demand the Sudeten land. I mean, obviously we can't do that yet. Rogan the Reichswerke. Um... I guess we have to wait. Do we? Or do we not have to wait? Because, you know, end there the very the side. Uh, Diktat. And so the time's come to rid ourselves of one thing that can, uh, causes so much pain and sadness. The vow and horrid treaty signed in the Hall of Mirrors shall be no more. Deutschland needs to not listen to that piece of paper anymore, and we've got uh, reason to. Uh, the Wehrmacht rebuilds, the Lufthansa expands, the Kriegsmarine uh, so strong, the people of Germany shall no longer have their lives dictated by men who aren't Germans. The day of the German to rule the German is here, and soon the nations that wanted us weak, that wanted us dead and buried, shall experience the full power of Germany. God be rid of the Treaty of Versailles, as we rid or shall rid, rid ourselves of it soon enough. The Treaty of Versailles is over. Shushnig announced a referendum. There we go. Austrian Chancellor Kurt Schuschnigg has announced that the referendum is taking place in the matter of Anschluss, an obvious move by the pro-independence politician to secure his nation's sovereignty. Schuschnigg, with approval of the president and other political leaders, has decided that a plebiscite is to take place to show the international community the wishes of the Austrian people on the matter. Several issues have already been arisen. The most controversial of them perhaps being the wording of the referendum, which asks, Are you for a free, German, independent, and social, Christian, and united Austria for peace and work, for the equality of all those who affirm themselves to the people in the fatherland, with only a yes and no answer possible? Adding to the controversy is the issue of voting, with members of the Chancellor's party being allowed to vote at any age, while other Austrians below the age of 24 is excluded. Uh, most likely due to the fact that most NSDAP sympathizers are among the youth. With internal and external disapproval, mostly from Germany mounting, with Will Schuschnigg managed to preserve his nation, we won't let him deny his people's will. No, no, no. you going to die now. German troops in Austria, Chancellor Schuschnigg forced to resign. That's what we thought. And what many called an inevitable outcome, German troops finally uh, entered Austria. This comes after the canceling of the uh, referendum organized by the Chancellor Schuschnigg to preserve Austrian independence. German insistence on the matter being almost a certainty. The aftermath uh, of saw an ultimatum being received by Schuschnigg in which Adolf Hitler demanded that he hand over all power of the Austrian branch of the NSDAP or face an invasion. 
Facing an untenable situation and with no help coming from either the French or the British, the chance to resign. President Villain Miklas uh, initially refused to give in to the demands, but eventually realized the futility of his resistance and acquiesced. The Denmark troops wasted no time into the territory of their brothers, unopposed by the Austrian armed forces, cheered on by the crowds of waving flags. While they condemned by the international community, repercussions are most likely not going to amount to anything more than that. Many observers are of the opinion that the Germans would have had invaded regardless of any publicity or armed resistance, so it can be said that Austria's fate was sealed the moment the Fuhrer decided to unite all Germans. Heimann's Reich? Oh god. Oh, the economy. Oh no. Oh. Who are these guys? So these guys are what? 21? Our guys are 21 too. You know, I just make them like all the same for now. Uh, you guys go there. Because you're going to need to. You guys are uh, 25 and a half combo with. My good god. You're still going to go there. That is a thick division. Light pen. Okay, I don't think I can agree with this division. 6.8. Are you kidding me? Why would you even use this? If anything, I want another panzer division. I'm going to convert you to infantry. Anyways. So now we've got another issue on hand. And to get Osmok. Sure. Decision's already in progress. Okay, so we gotta wait for these to finish, then we can go to get Czechoslovakia. Crap, 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 crap. What are we supposed to do here, my friends? I don't think I'm costing us that much. I actually built everything, but my god. And we did get a little bit of their fuel, too. The Navy needs so much fuel, my god. Oh, Jesus. And those bloodsuckers. More rubbers, nice. Fuel gain for oil is going to be absolutely mandatory. Claiming Mamel, of course, and creating agreements with the USSR and the Versailles dictate. Dictate that. The Soviet Union agrees to a trade agreement. Tends to go war. We have reached good news from the Soviet Union. After many discussions and such much disagreement over what the final term should be, we in the Soviet U Union are now content with what we'll both get out of this deal, and they've agreed to sign the commercial agreement. The Soviets will send us raw materials worth 650 million Reichsmarks in total, and we'll send them 650 million worth of Reichsmarks worth of technology, consumer goods, and industrial machinery. The raw materials will be particularly useful in helping us bypass the British blockade that is stopping us from acquiring resources that are crucial to the war effort. As well as exchange of raw materials and other goods, we will provide the Soviets with several pieces of naval equipment and technology, including the cruiser Lutvitz, uh, Lutvitzov, and the plans for upcoming battleship uh, Bismarck, along with a plethora of other military equipment, such as warplanes and samples of tanks and artillery. The most crucial part of the agreement for us is the oil we will be receiving from them, as we do not have a large surplus of fuel for our army, and without this agreement, we will not be able to import much more because of that blasted British blockade. But we don't have to worry about it too much right now, as the trade with the US stars open more opportunities to get resources from somewhere else. If you could sign on the line, please. Oh god, this is a crap ton of political power. Too bad I don't care about political power. The first being a war issued an ultimatum to Czechoslovakia. Oh, well, Czechoslovakia. Uh, with them under a de facto German influence and control. It's probably the time we make an arrangement with them official, by sending an ultimatum to them along with mobilizing our troops within the area of the border, ensuring a swift invasion in case they intend to resist our demands. However, this time we should be careful. We have given extensive guarantees to the West that we shouldn't, at least in an official capacity, intervene and control Czechoslovakia and our respective territories. However, much like our diplomatic actions, they are expected to be mute, but nevertheless, we must take action. Rule over the Danube. Um, secure the north. Can we go to war with Norway early? I know it's not very historical, but like, I don't imagine now. Hmm, West Wall. Though we're not necessarily prepared to achieve it in the current moment, our eventual goal is to take control of the vast number of territories to our east and to integrate them into our Reich. This, however, will not be achieved without a conflict with the Western powers, which will require a significant number of soldiers to end. Um, uh, to station the majority of our troops in the east without compromising the defensive capabilities of our western flank, we'll need to construct strong fortifications along our borders with France, our closest enemy. If constructed, this line of fortifications of West Wall will allow for us to station fewer troops at the border while still providing a significant obstacle for enemy armies wanting to pass through, um, delaying them significantly and giving us time to send reinforcements if necessary. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, we're making a dollar. I really don't want to mess with. Uh, oh, declares you know, Germany. You bet they do. Um, too much here, like ec economically wise. But 
The last thing in the coffin has been struck. The referendum organized by the German government has turned out to be, unsurprisingly, in favor of the Austrian reunification of the Reich. With 99.7% of the votes saying ya, yeah, all others' complaints, but be they fairness about the lack of secrecy, we uh, are rendered insignificant. Now, officially known as the province of Ostmark, the former territory of Austria will now be ruled directly by the NSDAP with Sex Inquart as its governor. All over Germany, the population is jubilant, raising the already high population of Adolf Hitler to heights that would make any politician gawk. With the matter of the Anschluss being taken care of, international observers expect the Führer to continue its quest to unify all Germans. There are clouds now gather over Czechoslovakia, home to a sizable German minority, the Sudets. Although the Reich will lay dormant for a while in this foreign policy to avoid rousing the continent's giants, it can be expected that eventually Germany will turn its ravenous eye towards their eastern neighbors. It's only a matter of time. Welcome to the Reich. Absorb Austrian heavy industry. Lose 300 monies. Output uh, goes up. Maintenance goes up. But it's, oh, get more civvies. As a result of the Anschluss, we are now left with complete access to the resources of Austria to make effective use of these resources, which will absorb the industrial assets indus of the region, many of them privately owned by German investors who into the Reichswehr. It will enable us to considerably expand our ore mining and steel production operations, which is absolutely essential for the Heer. Kriegs mean Luftwaffe to continue expanding the rapid rate required for them to surpass the armed forces of the enemies that surround us. Put Linz air under the Reichswehr. 900! Oh my god! Build the Nibelungwerke. I like that idea. Reorganize the Rexbecca, we probably want to do that, um, but I do want these two. But we have to absorb the Austrian heavy industry first, so. Overtake Alpine Montan Gesellschaft. Alpine Montan Gesellschaft is one of the largest steel companies in the Austrian region, is run by the German industrial giant Veranekta Stahlwerke. Due to the significant size of Alpine Montan Gesellschaft, it would be incredibly useful for our steel production efforts to the Reichsverko to gain control of it, which we will attempt to do in order to acquire this business. We shall purchase a non controlling share of it, then proceed to challenge Vereinigte Stahlwerke and wrestle the control of the company away from them, allowing the Reichsverko to absorb it and make use of its extensive production capabilities. Absorb Eisenwerke Oberdaunau. Eisenwerke Oberdonau is one of the largest iron and steel production companies in Austria, owing a plethora of properties throughout the region. At the Reichsverke, which is overseen by Hermann Goring, were to absorb the company into its rapidly expanding conglomerate, it would allow for the possibility of lucrative opportunities to be pursued. One of the opportunities would be the ability to assert control of Berlin, so a region filled with resources that could be very useful in the country's request for supremacy and revenge against cowardly Western democracies. That in itself is not bad. That's actually pretty good. We have one day left, because I do want to keep an eye on about how much money we're spending over here, too. Uh, yeah, do that one, too. Because we have, like, no money. Because we want to take out loans. Oh, my God. It's going to be so bad. What if... MFO bills. That's really bad. Like, we're just trying to build as much as we possibly can right now. Because we're not going to have the ability to build later. Oh. Oh, we can reorganize it right now. Maintenance is, is only 9%. It was recommended I get rid of any maintenance. But efficiency is not terrible right now. Hmm. We have more than enough steel. More than enough, though. So. I want to do all of it, but we just don't have all the money for it. I don't mind maybe doing this one early, which would be bad, but whatever. Oh, God. It kills a lot of our political power. Yeah. Unemployment's only 4.5%, even after we absorbed Austria. Beautiful. Eyes of the East, huh? This is uh, a little concerning about why that's not going, but whatever. Um... We need more planes. How do we get more planes without making more military factories? We need to import some more rubber too, I guess, at this point. Two. Put on two. Put on two. Everything for planes, I guess. Which is a bit ridiculous, but I mean, it makes sense. Um, we'll trade for two more, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Someone else says in the comments below, uh, thanks for introducing me to this mod. Someone says, he also says, I'm not sure what template is best, but the developers say they try to make the real division to the best ones. So, The Munich Conference. Talks have been held in Munich between the leaders of Germany, Britain, and France, and Italy. They discuss the future of Czechoslovakia, of course. Both the British and French have accepted our claims to the Sudet and land is legitimate, and their previous efforts of support to the Czechs have been rescinded. Recognizing the hopelessness of the situation, the Czechs have surrendered their Sudeten territories to us. The oppressed German inhabitants will long last be brought into the Vaterland. It's a historic day for Germany. Carriers, too. Alright, oh, yeah, I'm going to read this, we're going to this one next, too. Engineering, 37, or 37 or 38 now. 
for effectiveness. Uh, is there anything else for 37, 38 here? We're looking pretty good there. So we'll come into that one. The Munich Agreement. Uh, you know, I'll grab one of these two. German demands for the Sudeten territory in Czechoslovakia, which is home to a considerable German minority, has been intensified. At a summit held in Munich, Germany, Britain, France, and Italy thought to uh, find a diplomatic solution to the so-called Sudeten crisis. Czechoslovakia was not invited to attend. An agreement was reached in which Germany annexed the Sudetenland, but not pursuing any further territorial gains in Europe. Mr. Chamberlain spoke to crowds in London. For the second time, the Prime Minister has returned from Germany, bringing peace with honor. I believe it is time for peace in our time. Peace, at least for now. Oh, look at this. With Czechia now being firmly in our hands, it has become time for us to incorporate the region's economy into our growing rearmament sector and subsequently the Reichsvaka Humangori. Two, to begin this process, we will begin the integration of the Czech industry, which was formerly owned by the Jews in the growing conglomerate, with the most notable property being the uh, Vitkovich Mills. These mills were formerly owned by the Rothschilds, and especially notorious Jewish banking family are amongst the largest steel and iron mills in the whole country, and with us providing especially useful assets for Germany. Of course, then again, I, we, I got rid of free trade because we were on free trade for a while. And then I went down to export focus because it hurts us a little bit, but like overall, like whatever. It should be okay. First, we need a ward. Incorporate the Sudetenland, yes. Rex Autobahn. We're, we're not even making a dollar, man. I'm worried now about that. If I had to do that one too, that's fine, but like, bruh. These military factories, it's really not that much. Consumer goods, I mean, if, it, if I had to tax them higher, I will. Oh, we can't do this one? Oh, increasing the attack power. Whoops, my bad. As we establish a hair as the true masters of the land, we must make sure that its capabilities are the high standards, capable of striking the heart of the Reich's adversaries without hesitation or inferiority. Oh, there it is one right there. Oh. Yeah. I did. My bad. My bad. Train until you die. Um. Ah, what's war? Though we're not necessarily prepared to achieve it at the current moment, our eventual goal is to take control of the vast numbers of territories of the East, of course. And integrate them into the right. How does not be achieved without conflict with the Western powers, which will require a significant number of soldiers to end? So, we're to devise defensive capabilities on our Western flank. If this constructed, this line of fortifications, the West Wall, will allow for us to station fewer troops at the border while still providing a significant obstacle for enemy armies willing to pass through, delaying them significantly, and giving us time to send reinforcements if necessary. Actually, right now, trains are not great. Tanks are looking really bad, too. You, can't, you don't have enough of anything to build anything here, man. I'm trying to get more fighters, but still. Western Air Defense Zone. This just causes more. Oh my god. Bruh. I'll do it at least once, but. Not even a dollar a day. You know what? I'm an hour 23. That's better. But I, I don't want to tax people more and more and more. You know, we're not at war yet. Military spending? That's not even that much. It barely affected this at all. That's barely anything, too. Low social spending. I'm going to do whatever we can to save at least a little bit of money now, maybe. Because we'll, we'll write things and change things back to what they used to be, but... First Vienna Award. Oh, they got Slovakia. It's nice for them. How much anti-air do we actually have? We actually have enough. We will need anti-air on here, too. Is it worth doing now? Maybe. Maybe not. Probably not, honestly. Anti-tank. Do we have enough anti-tank? Yeah, we do. And artillery. I don't know if that's worth doing or not. We'll see. So. 
because everything else is pretty much done. Oh, that's your ultimatum in Czechoslovakia, it's fine. The fate of Czechoslovakia and embargo by the United States. The United Czechoslovakia is at hand, our forces are marching into Prague at this very moment. <clears throat> uh, with the surrender of the Czechoslovakian military, we have liberated vast quantities of armaments. Their tanks in particular should serve our forces as well. Bowman will be annexed into Germany as a protectorate, but what should happen to Slovakia? We can set the moves on a Thomas puppet state under Joseph Tito. Set up Slovakia. I always like partitioning uh, Czechoslovakia with Hungary. Oh, we could also take all of them. I'd like that too, but. Yeah, whatever. Gunther Panka becomes leader of the fascist party. National daddyist. Get yeah, a little bit more money for now. Oh, they just go to war with the Republic, huh? Poor guy. Tizo is here. Tizo, Tizo, Tizo. Oh, this guy. Konstantin von Neurat and Emil Hacha. Civil repression. I love civil repression. The fate of Czechoslovakia. Dreamed to have crossed into uh, Bohemia and Moravia, ostensibly to restore order to the region to the wake of the collapsing Czechoslovakian government. In Prague, the occupying forces announced the creation of an autonomous protector within the German Reich. With German support, Slovakia has been declared independent under the leadership of Joseph Tiso. The nation of Czechoslovakia is no more. The Czechs must be protected from themselves, of course. Embargo by the UK, but too bad we don't give a crap. Danziger War. Uh, Danziger is a small piece of land of the most, but to us, everything. This little piece of territory owned by the Polish has divided our fatherland in half, and... Oh, well, I guess those guys are capable of them. <clears throat> As a bitter reminder of the decadent Versailles that had brought suffering and discontent to all Germans throughout the world, this single piece of one of the cornerstones in a struggle for Lebensraum, and as such, is of paramount importance to us to ensure that a safe and speedy reclamation back to its home. We'll use all the available means, including war in regards to the West intervenes. It's high time that we show the world the true might of the German war machine, a machine that has been cultivated secretly so the world can see its wrath while in terror. You more manpower in the field. Zapper for them is done, that's good. Man, we're not going to be ready for this war at all. Daily gains only a thousand. We should have enough rubber soon, but we obviously do not have enough yet. <clears throat> uh, I want to plan to expand the Autobahn because I think that'd be really smart to do. But maybe that's just me. Um, there you go. Guess you guys next, huh? Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, early synthetic rubber production is very nice, but I think I might end the episode here because I might have to replace some of this because of the way things have been set up. So, especially with this whole thing here, we'll see. Uh, over the Danube, that would be bad. Well, since the beginning of history, the Balkans have always been contested by different empires seeking to expand and consolidate their influence there. With these civilian civilizations ranging from the ancient Greeks, the Ottomans, and the German Habsburg dynasty, now that agreement is on a confrontation course for the, both the British and the Soviets, we must seek to be one step ahead of them and finally secure the Balkans for ourselves, finally cementing German in Germanic influence in the region. <clears throat> Either through diplomacy or conquest, we'll secure both vital resources, such as the Romanian oil fields, and potential allies among the nationalist movements of the countries, such as Yugoslavia, but if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what else we can do with the right before the economy explodes. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great German rest of your day.